The modern voltage-controlled analog synthesizer was born in the 60s, and for forward-thinking musicians, it ushered in an entirely new tonal palette. The piano-style keyboard quickly became the de facto controller for synthesizers, because it was easily adapted as a large row of momentary switches, the perfect controller for a synthesizer. But from the onset of analog synthesis, all types of musicians, not just keyboardists, were anxious to jump on board the electronic sound bandwagon. Early on, there were scattered attempts at using modified percussion instruments to control conventional analog synthesizers. In 1970, Moog created a giant, dedicated prototype drum synthesizer based upon their existing modular synth modules, but it never made it into production. Moog did market a small drum controller pad in the 70s for use with their existing synth line, but they never produced a synthesizer that was optimized for drum and percussion tones. In the mid-70s, pioneering electronic band Kraftwerk took their own DIY approach to electronic percussion, creating crude multi-pad controllers and interfacing these to the one-shot buttons of a Maestro Rhythm King drum machine that was originally intended as a home organ accessory. But besides the aforementioned Moog and other scattered DIY attempts, there were no commercially produced dedicated electronic drum systems. In 1976, Joe Pollard, a session and touring drummer who had worked with the Beach Boys and the Grassroots, expended a huge amount of money and effort crisscrossing the U.S. in search of someone to make him a practical electronic drum system. He eventually landed at the offices of the Tycho Bray Sound Company in California. Tycho Bray were a mobile PA company providing sound reinforcement for acts including the Rolling Stones, Black Sabbath, and Robin Trower. They had recently expanded their business to the booming guitar stomp box market with three pedals, the Octavia Fuzz, the parapedal wah, and the pedal flanger, which was the first pedal format flanger. At the time, electronics whiz and inventor Mark Barton worked at Tygo Bray as a tech. One day, this guy walks into the shop, and the chief engineer didn't want to have anything to do with him. He said, hey, Barton, go outside and see what this guy wants. That was Joe Pollard. He had with him a really terrible prototype electronic drum set with it that went boop when you hit it, and sometimes would just squeal and make strange noises. Believe it or not, Joe Pollard's inspiration wasn't so much to expand his tonal palette, but instead to compete with the deafening roar of Marshall Stacks on live stages of the day. When Pollard arrived at Tycho Bray, he had a one-off prototype electronic drum set that someone else had built, but it didn't sound particularly good, and it didn't work all that well. When he said what he wanted, I told him that, hey, that's no problem, you just want something that you hit it and it makes a sound, goes boom, whatever, and I, I thought it was fairly simple and he looked at me very incredulously because he had just met with failure from everybody else and said no it's not that easy. I go yeah it really is that easy. With Joe Pollard's suggestions and a number of his own ideas, Mark Barton proceeded to build four identical electronic drum prototypes. He gave me some drum shells to put the electronics in and I went out and decided what the control should be, how it should work and, and all of that and uh, built some prototypes. Howard was well-connected and took the prototypes to his rehearsal studio, inviting A-list drummers to check them out, including Jim Keltner, Hal Blaine, Steve Gadd, and some guy named Ringo. Though these prototypes didn't sound like real drums, pro drummers loved them and opened their wallets wanting to buy the prototypes. Armed with its positive feedback, Pollard and Barton, along with financier Don Stone, formed Pollard Industries. Joe Power designed the screw together drum pads and enlisted Sam Mushnick of Duraline to make indestructible Kevlar drum heads, and the Syndrome was born. The Syndrome was an immediate hit and found its way onto dozens of chart topping records. Barton envisioned the Syndrome being used by innovative prog rock bands of the day, and this did happen to an extent. Check out Terry Bozio playing the Syndrome live with Frank Zappa. The Syndrome also found its way into mainstream pop rock with Linda Ronstadt's Poor Poor Pitiful Me. And perhaps most famously in Jerry Rafferty's smash hit, Baker Street. One unique innovation of the Syndrome is its sweep control which allowed the pitch to fall or rise when it was struck. Not only did this add a great deal of personality, it made it sound much more like a real drum. But exaggerating the sweep amount also landed the syndrome in dozens of disco hits of the day, which wasn't really what Barton had bargained for. Unfortunately, it was on a lot of disco records. <laughs> that's, where it, that's where it wound it up. I really wanted them in the progressive rock world, but uh, disco music was coming up. They had that boo kind of sound that, that caught on. Following the disco craze, syndromes remained popular with new wave bands, most notably the Cars, who used them in their 1979 hit, Let the Good Times Roll. Let them knock you around. 
As with many startup businesses, Pollard Industries eventually folded as a result of cash flow teething issues and was forced to sell to another outfit, who soldiered on for a few more years in the 80s, producing the Syndrome model line unchanged. The company existed for two years, and I didn't make much money at all. I didn't even get to take a step home. As fast as we could make them, they went out the door. Uh, the reason it failed was that it was a uh, cash flow problem because music stores just don't pay. So even though we had a huge endorsement list, even though we had a huge accounts receivable, even though we had huge demand, we still failed because of rising debt. Fast forward to 2020, where Mark Barton now produces numerous virtual modular synth modules for the Cherry Audio Voltage Modular System under the name MRB. Harnessing modern computer power, MRB has precisely recreated a virtual version of the original Syndrome for Voltage Modular. Its tones are generated using 100% virtual modeled synthesis. It uses no samples whatsoever. The MRB Voltage Modular Syndrome module also gains immense flexibility with CV inputs for almost every control, and it comes in single voice mono as well as polyphonic versions. And best of all, it's available for a fraction of the cost of an original unit. Check out the MRB Syndrome for Voltage Modular at the Cherry Audio online store at store.cherryaudio.com.